Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had uh, a good uh, trading day. Again, before we begin, uh, please like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff that helps us push the message uh, for unbiased technical analysis. So hopefully you guys uh, can develop in a very good organic technical way and we get some uh, eyeballs that helps everybody out. So thank you very much again for all your support. So interesting day. I, I think that's the best way of saying it. I think it was a very, very interesting day. Um, if you watch the weekend update, you know, we, we you know, I had a pretty, uh, pretty good game plan. Uh, very, very aggressive open today. Um, first two, three hours, very, very aggressive. And then slowly but surely the market kind of lost a little bit of steam. We'll get to that in a second. But if you guys watched uh, the weekend video, we talked about this highest formation here in this whole channel, right? This whole channel here, we broke above the 299. And the whole game plan was if the, the Qs can start reclaiming the 300 level, I think there's a shot we have another day of rally. And if you look at uh, if you look at the tape, uh, that's exactly what happened. I mean, you had uh, this pre-market, you know, you had the pre-market pretty much flat open. Uh, if you look, at, if you looked at all the indexes this morning, you had the S&P, the Dow, the Nasdaq, you know, pretty much unchanged, down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit pre-market. But we knew that if we can just reclaim and confirm Friday's channels, basically above uh, this 300 area that we talked about on the video, there's a shot. Uh, we can start, uh, you know, moving along, right? Moving to the upside. And, and that's exactly what it did. I mean, the bulls did an absolute phenomenal job this, this morning. Uh, again, it, one of the more, uh, definitely one of the more aggressive opens uh, I can remember in the last uh, couple of weeks. And we got that pretty aggressive move. So it woke up flat. Uh, we got above Friday's channels and we just started pumping, like really, really pumping. And ultimately, we went from 300 to 303, 303.60s. 303 a uh, really, really big move. And the question was, well, what was going to happen next, right? Now, obviously, after a push into supply, and you can see this uh, upper Bollinger Band, the question was, well, what are we going to have to expect from the next two days? If you don't know, uh, the next two days, you have uh, Chairman Powell, uh, he is uh, testimony, uh, testimony for the next uh, couple of days, Tuesday into Wednesday. Uh, and the question was, well, was the market going to be a little erratic prior to uh, prior to his testimony tomorrow. And uh, obviously the first inclination was, of course, I think tomorrow you're probably gonna have a little bit of whipsaw. We just didn't think the whipsaw were gonna come right after this really aggressive. And look at these two volume bars on the Q's intraday. This is a, a massive move from 303 to nearly, th uh, from 300 to nearly 304. And then slowly but surely we started dying out. I mean, slowly, I mean, really, really slowly. It first started coming into a nice little base came back, bounced a little bit. They came back in another little base and bounced a little bit. And the next thing you know, we started getting very, very heavy and kind of floated back into this rising support. Granted, this is still the highest close in this whole formation, but the problem is going into tomorrow's session is you can see here, right? This is an inverted hammer. What does that mean? Well, take a look, right? Here was an inverted hammer. Look what happened the next day. Here was an inverted hammer. We got down to the next support, right? And the fact that we have, uh, and the fact that we have Powell's testimony tomorrow, you know, I thought going into tomorrow's session before we even kind of almost uh, gave back the whole day's worth of gains, I thought going into tomorrow's session we were already going to have a really whipsaw day. And I was already talking about uh, in the webinar about kind of you know scaling back your expectations, maybe scaling back uh, your activity levels for tomorrow because again, one word here, one word there, your your position whether it's long or short is probably going to get wicked out. So uh, we got a little bit of an, an aggressive pull uh, after lunch. You know, by after lunch, we know we're already, you know, done 95, 98% of our day anyway. Again, uh, I trade primarily, you know, 95% of my day, probably 99% of my day uh, up to about one o'clock or so. If I have a runner, that's fine. If I get stopped out, that's fine. Uh, but it's very rare unless the market is really trending where there's a massive expansion day. Uh, like we had Friday into the close, that we're going to start putting on positions uh, in the in the afternoon for tomorrow's session. Because again, what usually happens is you get expansion channels in the morning. That's where 
uh, new traders are chasing and everybody's chasing and it's the in, you know the, everybody's pounding on their chest is it Monday yet is it Tuesday yet all that stuff they always also dies out in the first 10 minutes of the day when they realize they're doing exactly the same thing uh, they got them into trouble in the first place and the next thing you know the afternoon comes and the channels start contracting this is where you start seeing a lot of accumulation positioning uh, for the next day whether somebody's long short or indifferent so you start seeing channels always kind of die but today, the price action died, and and the, and the price per share uh, de declined uh, as well. So it's gonna be a very very odd day for tomorrow. Again, I believe the testimony starts. I think it's a, I think it's at ten o'clock. I could be wrong, but the problem is right. Even though this is the highest close in this whole formation, we put we did put in this inverted hammer again. This is this is a sell signal. This is not a buy signal. Uh, obviously, anything could happen tomorrow, right? Uh, this guy turns around and says, "Hey, we have a definitive plan." Uh, for the remainder of 2013, 2014, the market just explodes right back. He could also turn around and say, well, we just assessed the situation. We're assessing the situation and keeping a track on inflation and all that stuff. And this thing could be going on for the next two, you know, two to four years. We've heard all this. We heard this back and forth rhetoric now for years and years and years. And now that we're kind of looking for that final, final definitive answer, what, what is this inflation game uh, finally going to stall a halt or just be done with, we're not going to get it, right? We're not going to get it. And the market's going to be very erratic and the market's going to be moving up and down in the next couple of days. And I think, you know, I think some traders got nervous today. They started pairing out their positions, especially uh, after a pretty big, you know, pretty big rally in the last three days. Uh, I think this is one of those situations. The bulls won the morning, uh, the bears won the afternoon. And now we're kind of delta neutral uh, expecting uh, you know, expecting some sort of clues in the next couple of days. So I, I do believe uh, if you're an aggressive trader, try to scale down tomorrow just because, uh, again, uh, one word from this guy could, you know, could be ultimate violence. And, they, and again, the point of trading is you want your day to be very predictable, right? Based on research, you don't want your, you know, you don't want to run into the violence. Again, again, all it takes is one word and this market could go one way or another very aggressively. Again, just look, case in point, look what Bostic did on Thursday. Again, this guy's not even a voting member. And look what his words did. It sparked a you know, massive three-day uh, three run in, uh, for the Bulls. So look, I, I think tomorrow you got to be very cautious. Um, ironically, you know, ironically, I have, I mean, it's not that I'm sell biased into tomorrow. I just can't find any longs just because, just because we had this big inverted hammer. So yeah, I mean, I have like four or five ideas that I like to the short side tomorrow, uh, but it doesn't mean I'm sell biased. It's just, it's just if those uh, if those stocks confirm and this inverted hammer gets a day two, just the way we had here, uh, and just the way we had here, you know, we could get into some opportunities to the downside. But again, best case scenario, we kind of tread water, right? We kind of tread water, maybe, uh, you know, try to, you know, I, I don't want to say, um, you know, I don't want to say try to brush these next two days to the side, but, you know, try to trade for some cash flow. There's definitely some charts that I'm watching uh, that look interesting. Uh, Marvel, you know, and again, maybe you confirm some more, maybe it doesn't. Uh, Marvel, you know, got hit on earnings, kind of rebounded. But if, you know, if Marvel loses the 50 day moving average, maybe uh, it starts the next leg up. I, you know, I've been in this lift for like a week, right? Um, this has been the longest swing, uh, swing ever uh, to the downside, obviously. I shorted this thing a week ago, uh, went down to 950s, rallied back, it got rejected up to 10. Uh, it's starting to roll over. Who knows? Maybe Lyft finally could get below this 950, start its next leg down. Uh, but yeah, it's something I'm managing. I'm probably mean this thing for years. It feels that way. Uh, Netflix, you know, I had a good two-day run. Uh, now it's kind of hugging uh, the bottom channel here. Again, you know, just it's some ideas that I'm just kind of watching uh, for, the, you know, for tomorrow. Uh, and Tesla, look at Tesla. Uh, here, here's something Here's something interesting. This is before the market, you know, before the market... Um, before the market even reversed, uh, Tesla did nothing. Te you know, Tesla actually got weaker and weaker and weaker and just kind of went sideways a little bit for the rest of the day. You know, let's keep an eye on Tesla as well for tomorrow. If this thing could lose the bottom of the channel here, maybe maybe this thing starts uh, getting hit. So I'm not really, you know, I, I don't have a lot of expectations tomorrow. And I, I've always uh, I've always is said and I always reiterated, always play the premium hand. If you're getting dealt, if you know you're getting possibly dealt a four nine offsuit. Well, why go all in, right? Why you know? There's always gonna be a better hand. There's always gonna be a better uh, premium hand on deck. But I think, look, I, I think that there's definitely some. Um, I think there's some definitely names we could watch for some tomorrow. Some channels to the downside. Uh, I think we could take advantage. But but I, I think at, at the end of the day, I, I, the Powell testimony needs to be kind of right, kind of kind of pushed to the side. He's testifying tomorrow and Wednesday. It's a two day meeting, so you're going to have. A lot of bursts with the, with the cues, a lot of uh, sell-offs with the cues. 
the most important thing is just understand the dangers that you are uh, about to enter those murky waters uh, for the next two days and just kind of adjust your tier size, obviously down and just uh, tone down uh, your expectations. So let's talk about, right? Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, today's day. I mean, incredibly aggressive action here at the open. Again, you would have never known in a million years, you would have never known that the market was barely up today. It was super duper aggressive. Uh, everything just going absolutely nuts. I mean, the stocks are confirmed. Um, you know, majority of them went absolutely nuts. It was a really, really strong session. And then everything, next thing you know, everything just died. So let's talk about it. Uh, TTD, uh, 5780, rejected three times, needs to build. Not a huge move, but again, you know, not, nothing, not every trade needs to be huge. So we talked about this on the weekend update. You know, you see it three times, got rejected 5780, right? 5780 was the high from February 22nd. 5780 was the high from February 23rd. 50, 5780 was the high from Friday. Finally got above 5780, went up, you know, went up about a dollar and then kind of reversed like uh, everything else. Uh, IQ got upgraded and never confirmed $8. Uh, Amazon, uh, 95, it opened up 95, uh, then it confirmed uh, the pre-market high of 95.35 needs to confirm. Again, everything had a really nice spike here until everything got uh, rejected later. So it took out that 95 area, uh, traded up to 96.50s, and then again, reversed uh, just like everything else. Uh, AMAT exploded right off the open. Uh, 1960 rejected three times. Uh, needs to build. I believe we covered AMAT on the weekend video as well. Uh, here was, you know, here was, it took out this whole 1960 traded uh, all the way up to the 2160s, you know, very, very quickly before we got stuffed on supply. Again, another example of an inverted hammer. Uh, AMAT, I didn't trade any AMAT. 8240s needs to confirm pre-market channel. Uh, actually, it's not AMAT, AMD. Uh, I think AMD went up like a dollar and a half, nothing big. Uh, so it took out this whole channel here. Yeah, it went, you know, went to 8320s. Uh, went up, you know, went up, uh, you know, went up like a dollar and change. Nothing big there, but came back down. Uh, NVIDIA had was really, really strong. So NVIDIA broke out on Friday. If you guys remember off this uh, two, uh, 234, 235 level, it closed right at the high of the day. Uh, 239 rejected three times, needs to confirm. You know, nice move. Yeah, beautiful move. Beautiful, beautiful move on NVIDIA. Uh, went to 42 and change. Uh, before reverse down and Microsoft. Microsoft was sweet today, really nice. Uh, 257 needs to build uh, the pre market highs. That's also the 223 highs. So 257, uh, Microsoft traded into the 260s. Again, here, you know, big, big, beautiful move here, traded to this 260s before reverse down. So the bulls, you know, bulls had it going today. They did in the first three hours. And then next thing you know, uh, and then next thing you know, gravity kicked in, people got worried. Uh, Pal was on deck. The jitters, the you know, the uh, the unknown, and the last thing the market wants is uh, always the unknown because that's when the things uh, get dicey, especially when you throw in a wrench, uh, like you know, like a pal wrench. So you know, the numbers that we want to pay attention to on the cues, uh, obviously this 299 level, right? This is where the whole uh, this is where the whole area of aggression started from. So as long as the bulls continue to hold on to that 298 299 level on the close i think they're fine tomorrow's obviously the first test of his first day of testimony obviously any close below the 20-day moving average of 298 again things start getting a little dicey for the bulls uh after this pretty pretty aggressive uh three-day run uh when you look at the spys uh kind of the same thing you had this big big rally broke the downtrend here uh, you know, they have to defend this, uh, you know, they have to defend this uh, 402 level, right? That's the 20 day. Again, if the bulls don't defend this 402 level on, on the spies, you're going to have a problem. And the IWM, not that this one really, really matters, but the IWM today failed even to take out Friday's channel. So this is the first one uh, that didn't even confirm the previous day's high. And now it's stuck back into this whole channel that has been trapped for two weeks. So again, you had an incredibly aggressive morning. Great job for all you guys. Uh, who uh, participated, that came in long, all that good stuff. Uh, but more important now is it's over, right? It's over. And just like the way uh, we talk about when you have a bad day and everybody has bad days, everybody has horrible days, and everybody has good days, and everybody has great days. But guess what? Those days are over, right? It's the past. We don't live there anymore. Tomorrow, it's only as good as uh, the next day's starting pitcher. Again, I've always said this. One day you could have, uh, you know, you have Verlander in his prime, going, you know, eight innings, striking out 14, giving up uh, no runs. And then the next day, the fifth starter gives up 11 runs in an inning and a third. Again, 
every day is its own uh, different story. And again, this is why the greatest reality television show is not on TV. Guys, stay blessed, everybody. Have a great day, and I will see you to all tomorrow. Take care.